Your tarot deck is a tool that gives you insight into yourself and the world around you. If you read using a standard Rider Waite Smith based tarot deck, the first 22 cards are called the Major Arcana or the Majors. These cards represent the major archetypes and lessons of life creative. Although there are standard tarot card meanings for each card, both the designer of your tarot deck and you, the tarot reader, can interpret them in any way you wish. This gives the tarot a lot of flexibility, as well as a lot of room for confusion. So in this video, I'm going to cover the standard meanings, patterns, and stories behind those first 22 cards, the majors. You can play along by pulling out the major arcana cards from your deck and following along with each card one by one. My name is Angie Green, the Simple Tarot Decks creator, and in this video, I'm going to cover the basics of the 22 cards of the major arcana in order. But first, if you're new here and are interested in more tarot tips and tools, hit that subscribe button and then let's get started. To make learning these cards even is easier, pause this video right now and download the free PDF tarot cheat sheet available from my website at this URL right here. It has the tarot keywords and the card meanings for all 78 of the cards in a single page. It is super useful when you're learning and reading the cards. And of course, I'll drop a link to this cheat sheet down in the description for you as well. Let's make things easy. The Fool is either the first or the last card of the Major Arcana, depending on how you order your cards. It's given the number zero, and it both starts and completes the life cycle of one's personal journey through the Major Cards. In the Hero's Journey, the Fool represents the ordinary world, which begins and ends each cycle. This is where the hero is enjoying his everyday life, secure and happy that nothing bad will happen. So I look at this card and I see a young man setting out for an adventure and not having a freaking clue what's in front of him. He's optimistic, self-focused, and blind to reality. But he's also got a cute dog and a nice purse, so... Eh. The Magician is the first card along the Fool's journey through the tarot. The Fool tarot card is numbered zero, and the Magician is numbered one. Confusing? It doesn't have to be. I like to think of the Fool as being outside of space and time. The Fool is the protagonist in our story, and the remaining cards of the Major Arcana are all players or events that happen to the Fool. The Magician is the first card the Fool meets, and this is why the Magician is numbered one even though this card is technically not the first card in the deck. In our hero's journey, the magician represents the call to adventure. Something shakes up our hero's world, and now he has a problem to solve. The high priestess tarot card represents the inner wisdom deep within all of us. It is a receptive and inward, inwardly focused card with hints of mystery and deep secrets. The High Priestess is paired with the active and outwardly focused Magician, which precedes it in the Major Arcana. On our hero's journey, the High Priestess is the first mentor that our hero meets. The Empress is the Earth Mother, who gives birth to all wishes and dreams. This card represents all things motherly from like an ideal mother sense, and she is paired with the masculine father figure of the Emperor. On our hero's journey, the Empress is one of the mentors for the Fool. The Emperor is the father figure of the tarot cards, partnered with the motherly Empress. The Emperor is the man you want in your reading or in your life when you are looking for practical, logical, and steady guidance. There is nothing wild here. It's all solid ambition, discipline, and good hard work. On the hero's journey, the emperor is another of the mentors. For many people, the Hierophant is one of their least favorite cards. He represents conventional society, authority figures, and doing things the right way. For people, especially the wild and unconventional types who follow the tarot's path, this pushes buttons. This card honors tradition and established rules. Not all established rules and traditions are bad, and sometimes it's better not to rock the boat, especially when you're sitting in it. So on our hero's journey, the Hierophant is one of the mentors for our fool. 
Everyone loves the Lover's Tarot card. This is the card for true love partnerships and long-term happy relationships. But it's not just for love. This card suggests a true soul level partnership where the personalities are or the elements are in total healthy balance. This could be a friendship, business partnership, or any place where two vibrant forces come together. On the hero's journey, the lover's card is the last of the mentors for the hero, teaching that two are always stronger than one. The chariot tarot card speeds into a reading with a message of power through action. The chariot rides into the tarot right after the balanced partnership of the lovers. When you have a wonderful partnership, you're ready to take action and tackle the big problems. On our hero's journey, the chariot represents the first action step the hero takes once he crosses the threshold. The, the, the hero has committed to his quest and is taking action. The strength card, also known as the healer, takes the action energy of the chariot and gives it more unconditional self-love. It's like you know, deep in your soul, that you have the inner strength to overcome any obstacle in your path. Yeah, yeah, you'll be tested, but you don't even care. You've got this. There might be lessons about trust and betrayal, friends and enemies, facade versus reality. But you have the courage and inner confidence to survive and thrive through them all. On the hero's journey, the strength card represents one of the test allies and enemies. The Hermit card is exactly as named, the card of solitude and withdrawal. When you are faced with a tough situation or difficult decision, the Hermit whispers, you already have all of the answers you need. You just need to go deep within yourself to find them. You must trust yourself. Maturity comes when you feel confident in your own voice and the Hermit wants you to get there quickly. On the hero's journey, the hermit represents another one of the test's allies and enemies. The Wheel of Fortune tarot card is sometimes called the gambler because this card deals with luck and fate. Of course, not all luck is good, so the meaning of this card does depend on the other cards that are read with it. Regardless, if you get the Wheel of Fortune in a tarot card reading, your luck is about to change. This card represents a lesson about control. No matter how much you prepare or how hard you work, you can't always control the outcome. Sometimes you get lucky and sometimes luck's not on your side. On our hero's journey, the Wheel of Fortune tarot card represents one of the tests, allies, and enemies that the fool meets. If you've been naughty or cutting corners, the justice card will call you out. This card arrives when things are out of balance and highlights the consequences of your behavior. So this card represents the lessons of the ultimate law, the law of cause and effect. If things seem out of whack, the justice card has a message for you. The universe is playing fair, always fair. You may not like the outcome, but it will be based on harmony and fairness for the greater good. In a literal sense, this card anticipates a legal situation or a judgment. On our hero's journey, though, the justice card represents one of the many tests, allies, and enemies that the fool will meet. The hanged man is at peace with his situation. He's not struggling or sad. In fact, he appears very serene and accepting of this fate. It's the ultimate in letting go. You need to release the tight grip you hold on your ideas and the situation at hand. That won't work anymore, so becoming the agent of change by making a sacrifice, being the better man, will break the old patterns. When you feel betrayed, like a victim, or ashamed of your own actions, take a look at things from a different point of view. You need perspective. On the hero's journey, the hanged man represents the approach to the inmost cave. This is where the hero goes deep within himself to summon the courage to face his fears. The death card scares people. It's the card that elicits the most gasps and cringes when it comes up in a reading. But it doesn't mean what people think it means. This card rarely has anything to do with actual physical death. Instead, it's a card of rebirth. 
Like the mythical phoenix that rises from the ashes, one cycle is ending and another is beginning. There is a major transition happening where you must leave your old life and start something new. In the hero's journey, this card follows the sacrifice of the hanged man and represents the lessons of what happens after that sacrifice. You must let go of your hopes and expectations and accept what happens next. The death card represents the moment of the hero's ordeal. There's often a crisis here where their hero is forced to make an impossible choice. Temperance seems boring, especially sandwiched between the death card and the devil card, but this card is about boring things. The peace and comfort that exists when things are perfectly in balance. The temperance card serves as a reminder to remain patient and go with the flow. You can't always, or really ever, control a situation, but you can wait it out. I hate that, but it is the truth. This card is a reminder that renewal and rejuvenation are coming, so don't go to extremes or force something to happen. Exercise self-control and keep your emotions in check. On the hero's journey, the temperance card represents the reward or the seizing of the sword moment. The devil card is all about temptation. You know it's bad for you, but it feels so very good. This card is usually seen as a warning against obsessions, compulsions, and addictions. It is so easy to become a slave to the material and the physical world. It can quickly turn towards greed, explo exploitation, and oppression. But this isn't always a negative card. You'll have to read the other cards around it to get a feel for the situation at hand. So start enjoying the pleasures of life and let yourself become spontaneous and playful. Start exploring your deepest desires, but explore them without fear, shame, or excess. On the hero's journey, the devil represents the road back, where the hero tries to return home but is tempted along the way. The tower arrives when things are about to drastically change in your life. The change is ultimately for the better, but some stuff is about to go down. You are under attack from forces beyond your control or even beyond your understanding. There's nothing you can do. It's an unexpected attack too, so you won't see it coming and you can't really prepare for it. On the hero's journey, the tower represents the resurrection. It's a resurrection of the hero's problems, not of anything good. <laughs> This card is the climax. It's the crisis the entire journey has been building toward and the major lesson. You can no longer turn back and the only way out of this problem is to work through it to the end. The hero has made a choice during the crisis and this climax represents the fallout from that choice. The star is sometimes called the fairy godmother card because it arrives to let you know that everything is going to work out just fine. This is very good news, especially after the upheaval of the tower. So have faith and believe things are going to be okay, even better than okay. Unexpected help will arrive when you need it, and you have the inner clarity about the truth to solve this problem. The star card is the first in the three card cycle of the star, the moon, and the sun. It takes the turmoil of the tower that precedes it and turns that energy into renewal, hope, and peace. On the hero's journey, the star represents one of the cards of the return. This card begins the resolution of the hero's journey and his return home. The moon follows the hopes of the star and points out that things may not be exactly as they seem. So be on the lookout for unseen problems, deceptions, secrets, and haters. You could easily let your imagination and intuition take you to a dark and unfriendly place here, so keep your anxiety in check. Proceed with caution and prudence, but let your intuition be your guide. This card is a very strong call to follow your intuition. On the hero's journey, the moon represents one of the cards of the return. Our fool has been changed by his experience and begins to worry his ordinary world friends and family won't recognize or accept him. The sun is the last of the three cards that follow the crisis of the tower. Those cards again are the star, the moon, and the sun. This is the most positive and the joyous of those three. It is an active card asking you to celebrate and honor your growth. 
On the hero's journey, the sun represents the third of the cards of the return. The hero's friends are rewarded and his enemies suffer. The judgment card, though, has a big message for you. You can no longer hide or pretend or ignore the truths of your life. You see clearly now, and you must take action to remove what no longer fits and move toward what does. On the hero's journey, the judgment cards represents one of the cards of the return. The hero has been transformed and renewed by his journey and now must make sure he's putting those lessons he learned into action in his ordinary world. The world is the last card of the major arcana. The hero has reached the end of his journey and is about to begin another. It's a card of closure for the life lessons the hero has learned. It's time to start another journey, learning another one of life's many lessons, beginning again with the fool and traveling again through the major arcana. So that's the major arcana. Don't forget to download your printable PDF tarot cheat sheet. And if this video was helpful, hit that like button right now to let me know. Subscribe to the channel if you want more videos like this. And of course, if you have any questions or comments at all, I'd love to hear from you down in the comments below. Until next time.